Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. The CNMI advances to a more free stage in COVID protocols. Also tonight, the CNMI celebrates a new federal holiday. And frustrated workers voice out concerns. In sports, let the countdown begin. One year to go to a huge event. Stay with us, these stories and more. Dad never told me he was afraid of heights. <laughs> but he still climbed to that tree anyway. <laughs> Dad never told me he didn't like my boyfriend. <laughs> he drove us to prom anyway. Dad never told me he was really shy. He made sure we won the party games anyways. <laughs> Dad never told me that he'd miss me. But his hug took forever anyway. Love you, Dad. Oh, yeah. we shine like stars. Like stars. The Smoothie of the Month for Gold's Gym, Strawberry Mango Tropicana, priced at just $5.50. It includes non-fat or soy milk, strawberry, banana pre-post, strawberries, and mango. 398 calories, 5 grams of fat, 20 grams of protein, 45 grams of carbs. Bring your own cup and save 50 cents. Smoothie of the Month, Gold's Gym Garapin. McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich. You'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. Half a day, Tirawami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Friday, June 18, 2021. The Sinemai went from blue to green today. The move means some new freedoms, according to the pandemic chart. With 60% of the Sinemai population fully vaccinated, Governor Torres, along with Hospital Chief Esther Munia, declares community vulnerability level green for the Marianas. We're looking at our numbers at 60%. We reached that goal yesterday. Um, so 60% of eligible adolescents and adults to be fully vaccinated. And, you know, although this is not herd immunity, we feel this is very significant. Some of what Level Green means is that indoor spaces are back to 100% occupancy and indoor gatherings of 150 people are now permitted. But because the CNMI isn't at an 80% vaccination rate, entities should continue to enforce social distancing and the wearing of face masks. 
And with recent developments of the island's new level, curfew is officially lifted and business hours are back to normal. Effective today, the governor has declared the official cancellation of curfew hours and termination of reduced business hours for the CNMI. Since September of last year, the CNMI observed curfew hours from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. and required businesses to limit store hours. But with having a high vaccination rate and no recently reported cases of community transmission, the governor, along with CHCC, has deemed it appropriate to cancel curfew and resume regular business hours. A new federal holiday was signed into law just hours ago, and with us being one day ahead of the mainland, the holiday came rather quickly here in the NMI. It became effective today, and Juneteenth is now an official federal holiday. U.S. President Joe Biden signed the Juneteenth bill into law on Thursday, June 17th, Eastern Daylight Time. The legislation establishes June 19 as Juneteenth National Independence Day, a U.S. federal holiday commemorating the end of slavery in the United States. The U.S. Office of Personnel Management announced that employees will observe the holiday today, since Juneteenth falls on a Saturday this year. Around 10 a.m. this morning, Governor Ralph Torres granted administration leave to begin at 12 p.m. for all non-critical executive branch employees. A formal local judge has filed a motion to withdraw as the attorney for the majority shareholder of IPI. Lazama has been the personal attorney for Li Ji Shui to represent her personally in a case filed by attorney Bruce Berline against Imperial Pacific. The majority shareholder of IPI has been ordered to turn her cell phone in so that a copy of the electronic data on it can be made. Shui now wants a new attorney in this case and has turned over to the court a number of private emails between Lazama and her representatives. This kind of information is normally protected in them. Lazama comments on strategy and gives personal opinions. And now these emails are a matter of public record for anyone to see. It was a surprise to say the least, but Lazama says also not totally unexpected. Was it a slap on the face? Well, you know, um, not really because I, I kind of uh, thought that uh, uh, it was forthcoming because, you know, the clients and attorneys have uh, differences of opinion. If the, the, the client doesn't like, you know, the attorney's opinion and, and ins the attorney is insisting that such and such and such, uh, you know, uh, is the better way. Uh, and the client say, no, that's not a better way. Uh, sometimes they don't say it straight to your face, but uh, that's, if that's the way they feel and uh, they, they leave your office with that face, <laughs> then obviously <laughs> you have to expect. And I can't disclose uh, what triggered it, but uh, there was a triggering, uh, of course, uh, fa uh, factor. Lazama still represents IPI as local counsel in other cases involving the Commonwealth Casino Commission, the Pacific Rim case, and a case involving Can Pacific. The company, which initially promised to build 2,000 hotel rooms in exchange for the sole casino license, has been mired in controversy, raids by the FBI, hundreds of illegal workers on the construction site, constant changes in leadership both internally and on the construction side of things, workplace accidents, multi-million dollar default judgments, the halt of tourism, unpaid taxes and fees, and the suspension of the casino license. Can the company survive? As Lazama has spent a significant amount of time with the majority shareholder of IPI, KSPN asked if he was privy to any of the future plans of the company. What's really uh, preventing right now anyone from making any good uh Specul speculative, uh, you know, uh, view of uh, whether what's going to happen five years later. I think it's the is is the uh, this COVID uh, situation, you know, and also we don't have airlines, we don't have uh, uh, tourists. It's not even open, and if you don't open, if you don't operate right now, what really is. Uh, unpredictable, or if I know maybe it's not unpredictable. I think it's predictable that if you don't. You know, if you close the, a building, anything in there, everything in there is gonna, is gonna be affected. You know, because of the, or just the fact that uh, our island is so hot. They're not air conditioning as far yeah, as the right? so yeah. equipment in there. That yeah, I'm not so sure whether there's air conditioning, but what I'm hearing is that 
and it's not a good situation. If you leave your home for even 30 days and you come back, hmm, you don't want to do, you don't want to see that. Uh, uh, you don't want to leave your home. Uh, no one watching, watching it or opening it every day, at least uh, a window or so, you know. I know the chairperson doesn't speak English, but when in your conversations with her mm -hmm. uh, through the translator, it, does she ever talk about the company's plans if they're planning on going through with things, planning on finishing the building? Any thoughts on what her that's, thoughts are? That, that's a very good question, and uh, I'm, you know, I mean, uh, I'll be frank with you. Uh, uh, you know, I'll really be frank with you. Uh, I've never heard of, I've never heard her talking about future plans, present situation. You know that tells you something there, right? So uh, she disconnected from that business. I'm not going to make <laughs> an assumption, but you, you figure it out yourself. I mean, I, you know, I, I I know her. I got to know her well. Dozens gathered Thursday to voice out their concerns about the pandemic unemployment assistance program. They're giving a lot of numbers to call the labor and the poor, but none of them answering. Even Kilili himself, Tina Sablan herself, Ed Cross herself, said they've been calling that number, but no avail. We don't want to hinder their work at all, but we do want to be heard. Uh, we're here, we're supportive, we're peaceful, we just, uh, but at some point, where are we at? And that's what we need to know. A number of PUA applicants staged a rally on Thursday with signs saying, Release our PUA. Representative Ed Propes made an appearance before the protesters, listening to their concerns and sharing his sentiments. Talk to so, so many of you about your, your challenges right now. And there's so many of you that are going through the same exact thing from losing your apartment, not if you don't pay your mortgage, losing your cars. Losing your power and water. Uh, there's so many, so many heartbreaking stories. All the more reason why this should be one of the top priorities for everyone. This morning, Labor Secretary Vicky Venaventi provided a comment on the demonstration. Unfortunately, in reviewing some of the uh, participants uh, in yesterday's protest, we noticed, noticed for the majority of them were pool applicants that were probably disqualified and deemed non-eligible because of their point status in the CNMI. Under the Continued Assistance Act, the Department of Labor had to disqualify a number of uneligible applicants. Beneventi states she understands their frustrations, but the guidelines are clear. We've attempted to change laws uh, with, with regards to who is qualified or eligible. Uh, we tried to expand the qualified alien definition and policy interpretations. We're working with U.S. Dole to help our people as much as possible. We understand the frustration with some of the delays understand the frustration with the fact that the laws require documents that may have not been required last year in June 2020. So that said, um, I understand the frustration. They're free to protest, they're free to speak as they wish, but I am mandated by federal law to keep this information confidential as far as each of those applicants who are in that protest line or who are calling in as well. Beneventi states the DOL is trying to resolve every issue with every applicant. Coming up, your next Sunday stroll may be in Telefofo. Find out what we mean after the break.
time is right, I don't have to worry about getting pregnant or anything. They won't be home for a few more hours. I'm Jennifer Maratita. Uh, I'm a proud ally, a proud mom. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I'm also the president of Pride Miranda's Youth and a mental health counselor. What we know of mental health is that it's unique to every individual. Um, there's a normal for each person. When we talk about mental health, we're talking about how a person thinks, how they feel, how they act. Uh, it's also known as how we deal with stress, things like the pandemic, or how we're coping with the typhoon and its effects. Uh, we're also talking about um, how we relate with others and make choices. So when we're talking about mental health uh, specific to our LGBTQIA community, um, we're looking at uh, what are the things that impact them. Based off um, the Youth Risk Behavior Survey that was conducted in 2019, 65% um, of youth who in high school who identify as being LGBTQIA plus um, felt hopeless and over 30% say that they had attempted suicide at least once in the 12 years prior to the data being collected. Yeah. Those, are, those are big numbers. What are, what are we doing to, that's got to send some, some chills down everybody's spine right. when you look at something like that. Um, yeah, and especially if you compare that data to um, YRBS data that was collected in 2015, um, where only 51% of youth said that they had felt hopeless, um, there's like a huge gap, you know, within four years, why is the number rising? When we're talking about our Pride Youth or our LGBTQIA community, um, we're not just talking about sexuality, we're also talking about attraction. So that's, in a sense, romantic attraction, emotional attraction. We're talking about gender identity. We're talking about gender expression. And so when we talk about ways we can support our youth, we want to understand about what are the mental health and social impacts that they're facing. And for some reason, according to our surveys, there are a disproportionate rate of incidences of bullying. They're reporting higher incidences of mental health issues like anxiety or depression. Um, we're seeing higher incidences of assault, uh, whether it's domestic violence, sexual assault, physical assault. So for some reason, these kids are telling us that we're upwards in two or three times higher than their peers. Our program was just started three years ago, um, the suicide prevention program. We've seen roughly 188 clients, um, and of that number, 4% identify as being LGBTQIA. So in that essence, CGC is doing something to support um, suicide prevention. Um, and we also offer a safe, safe space for the LGBTQIA youth to come in and talk about the problems that they're experiencing. One of my favorite quotes, it's by Maya Angelou, and she says that diversity is like a rich tapestry. And every thread in that tapestry is important and valuable no matter what its color. And I think that that's a perfect quote that uh, truly exemplifies the definition of uh, diversity. Diversity is the acknowledgement of the infinite number of differences that um, exist between individuals. So even considering the differences between uh, you and I, there are infinite number of differences. The problem is when we talk about the word diversity, we, as a society, we only think about specific categories like gender, age, um, uh, race, and we don't really move beyond that. Uh, diversity is really considering that there are so many more unique characteristics that make individuals special, and so diversity is the acknowledgement of that. Inclusion takes diversity one step further. Inclusion is the choice to allow individuals to participate in the society of which they are a part of um, in a way that is, that is safe. Um, and so that's, uh, that, uh, that really is the, um, uh, why diversity and inclusion is very important. And just to share one of my favorite quotes, it's by uh, Verna Meyer. She says that diversity is being invited to the party, but inclusion is being asked to dance. So that's what we hope to do is we, we don't wanna just say that you can come join us, but we want you to be in the same space that we occupy. But more than that, we want you to be able to fully participate. One strategy is using your privilege to empower. And so when you think about privilege, you think about 
um, uh, an advantage that you might have that others don't have, and whether that privilege is your education, your socioeconomic standing, your gender even, um, to use all of those advantages in, in a way that's going to um, help others. Um, another strategy is recognizing that um, inclusion begins with you. That if you decide today to employ inclusive strategies to make people feel welcome, to recognize their uh, uniqueness, that you set a precedent for others to follow suit. You influence your friends and your family members who then influence societies and communities and then these societies and um, communities then influence the world. So perpetuating positive social change can really begin with just one individual. Um, another strategy is um, just to continue to commit to learning about people who are different from you um, and really showing empathy. Uh, showing empathy. Um, giving yourself the opportunity to, to step back from your own, uh, your own self, your um, own life experiences, your own cultural context, and taking the opportunity to try to see through the lens of someone else. Um, and by doing that, I think we, we create um, uh, these practices that help advance the cause for, uh, diversion, uh, for diversity and inclusion. I think that, at least from my personal experience and the clients that I have served, um, they're not aware, or they don't really feel comfortable talking about their orientation. Um, I think it's important for everyone to realize that programs like ours do exist. The TASA program at PSS now is in existence. Um, I think that the more they feel like there are people out there who care, are willing to listen, there's more acceptance. We're talking about creating more inclusive safe spaces by having teachers kind of be those eyes and ears of ways they can stand up when, when things that they see are, are not okay. Um, and we're celebrating with family members uh, to be each other's support and celebrate diversity and inclusion, that this community is about, that love is love. Uh, and that even our religious or faith-based organizations are retracting some of the ways that they had been communicating things to be more inclusive. Um, that you don't have to uh, kick out your, your child out of your home because they're different. So that's kind of what I'm wanting the community to know is that um, just to celebrate uh, each of our kids, they're so vulnerable. They have so many things that they're faced with. And if we as a community can support them and embrace them and celebrate diversity, uh, that will create um, a safer Marianas. You have the flexibility to work out between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. At Gold's Gym, we call this off-peak, and it can save you money. Short-term daytime memberships on sale now, just $59 per month, and gets you access to the biggest and cleanest fitness center on island. Get yourself healthy and strong. Check out Gold's Gym today. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about 100 eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. The Tan Sri Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The series of the Department of Public Works groundbreaking ceremony continues with what they call the biggest road project for the CNMI so far. 
CNMI leaders and officials broke ground on Thursday for the construction of Route 36 Windward Road and Chalan Calabera. Lieutenant Governor Arno Palacio states that talks about this specific project began since the late 90s. This project has been going on since one Nikan Nobota was the Washington representative in the late 1990s. That's how long this funding was. It's a congressional funding. I think to the tune of about 12 million. 12 million dollars. It kind of sat around, the project sat around because of major challenges from regulatory and Indigenous Species Act to, to the Corps of Engineer and the designs and, and uh, HPO. Um, a major, a lot of major setbacks, but Today, we're here to break ground. Original plans of this road project is to connect Route 36 until Bird Island. Department of Public Works Secretary James Ada says there is still research to be done, but this specific construction is the main focus. So this project connects from Kingfisher all the way to, uh, to uh, Talan Calabera and uh, uh, Talan Calabera Monument. So, uh, it, Hopefully, if weather permits and everything is okay, hopefully it should be done by May of uh, 2022. Governor Torres states this project will change the way we market Saipan, not just for tourism, but for the community as well. This will allow us to drive around the island once it's done. So it's good for bike riders, uh, cyclists, tourists, uh, and of course our locals to enjoy and give other opportunities. Private businesses will soon offer COVID-19 vaccines on site in the efforts to reach the community better. Starting July, private businesses will be able to serve as a vaccination site for their employees, friends, and family. The Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation and the Governor's COVID-19 Task Force will collaborate with workplaces in allowing CHC staff to administer the Moderna and JJ vaccine. A minimum of 15 persons must be registered for vaccinations in each workplace site. And with more vaccination sites in place, the MCAT is shutting down vaccination operations by the end of August. The last day for first dose shots at the MCAT will be tomorrow, June 19. On Monday, only second dose administration will be conducted. Thank you. Good information there. All right, coming up to the sports report. Well, it's a Friday night special, of course. Every Friday night special here at KSBN 2. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. We're in a race whether we know it or not. Build our new normal. Enough of my lips to be out. Let us vaccinate, CMI.
Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. Sports fans, if yesterday's launch ceremony is any indication, the 2022 opening ceremony for the Pacific Mini Games will be something bigger and better than we've ever seen before. Even without any visitors present, the CNMI goes all out on Thursday afternoon, a preview of how this event will go down next year, with a parade of 24 flags from all over the Pacific, giving the ceremony an international feel. Please welcome New Caledonia! From the island of Team Black, New Zealand, Kiana Hosono sang a rousing rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Pacific Mini Games Executive Director Ben Babala gives an update on the numbers. As of today, we have over 1,300 athletes, over 400 officials from 19 countries arriving this time next year. Let the countdown begin. Everybody, three, two, one! <laughs> Well, there you go. There you have it, Marianas. 365 days to go to Pacific Mini Games 2022. Make that 364 days to go. Well, one of the uh, up and coming athletes on the island though, won't be competing next year. He's too young, he's still growing. Whoever said it's not whether you win or lose the counts, probably lost. Young Star Shining, brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. Some people are blessed with natural talent and speed. 14-year-old Cristobal Dela Cruz is discovering that after winning the MVP in the 14 and under McDonald's All Schools Track and Field Championships. Yeah, I just focused and just run to it. Have you always been fast? Mm, yeah. <laughs> when did you first know that you were faster than uh, other kids your age? Like ever since fifth grade. Started beating all my classmates and running. Entering the ninth grade next school year, the speedster takes running seriously. So where do you run and where do you do, do your stuff? In the, in the track or at the beach. What do you do at the beach? Honestly, I just sprint and then just take a break. Then I do three laps around, then take a break, then just do laps again. You run in the sand? Yeah. Why? Uh, I don't know. It's like more hard because like the sand, like, when you step on it, like, you, you move your balance. Then I just keep on. Keep on running, Cristobal. Don't slow down now. Is your goal to be the fastest in the month, Yes. In high school? Yes. And then, you know what the record is for the 100 meters? What? 10.99. Tyrone Omar. Can you beat that? I'll try. You're gonna or, I will. Young Star Shining, brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. 
Our top plays of the week are all high schoolers who haven't even graduated yet. Let's give them a diploma called Top Plays of the Week. Coming in at number three, Richard Steele smashes this goal in from distance, giving him the hat trick. Tip your cap for Richard Steele. Coming in at number two, it's Pagu Real winning the Tom Cedar Table Fishing Tournament with this 100 pound Marlin. The top play of the week. Gotaro Goto, where's he going? Only he knows for sure. Where's the ball going? In the back of the net. Gotaro Goto, top play of the week. Here's the wind up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Celebrate Father's Day weekend on the North Shore at Mariana's Trekking. Bring Dad on an off-road adventure with a special two-for-one offer. Good this weekend at Mariana's Trekking. Experience the best of Saipan's trails. This is a great group adventure, and our guides and photographers will take great family photos that will keep your dad smiling and tell him why he's the best dad around. Father's Day weekend at Mariana's Trekking. Sign up online or call 323-8735. Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total Resistant Exercise, or TRX, helps develop your core and improve strength. And Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. The Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for meal replacement or supplements. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. It was hot and steamy today on Saipan, the high 90, the low 80, with showers here and there, mostly in the middle of the island. Humidity, 63%. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, isolated showers. South winds, 5 to 10, high 90, low 80, seas 2 to 3 feet. Sunrise, 547, low tide, 910, followed by high tide, 223. Sunset, possible green flash alert, 649. It's official. The weekend begins right now. Have a great one. Have a safe one. See you back here on Monday.